Namaste and welcome back. The topic that we were discussing was bit manipulations. Now let's continue. Now I want you to understand something very very fundamental. See guys, whenever you want to store any data, right? Irrespective of the programming language, internally you would be making use of data types, right? Now I cannot take the example of Python because it's dynamically typed and automatically based on the value assigned to the variable, the interpreter decides the data type. But if in case you take Java as an example, just to store integer type data, in Java you have four options, byte, short, int and long. And the difference between them is that the amount of memory that it allocates, right? Byte as the name suggests will allocate just one byte of memory. Short will allocate two bytes, int will allocate four bytes, long will allocate eight bytes for you. Any confusion till here? Now the question is, you guys know that different data types have different ranges. For example, this is the range of values that byte can store, right? This is the range of values which short can store. This is the range of values which int can store, huge range. And that is the range of values that long can store. So clearly you can see that the range of values is literally doubling in each of the data types. But to calculate the range of values that a particular data type can store, we have a formula. That is, if in case a data type gives you n bits, right? This gives you 8 bits, this gives you 16 bits, this gives you 32 bits, this gives you 64 bits, like that. I hope you're able to think, right? So if in case it gives you n bits to store data, then the range of values it can store is given by a formula which is the left side of the range, that is the minimum value, is minus 2 to the power n minus 1. Two, the right side, which is the highest value that it can store, is plus 2 to the power n minus 1. Now, how did this formula come into picture? And what is the basis of this formula? And why is it that the range is specific? Why is it that it is minus 128 to plus 127 for byte? Why is it? What determines this? Are you curious to know? Well, if you're curious to know that, Let's begin by creating our own data type, friends. Let's create our own data type. Really, sir, you're going to create your own data type, yes? And my data type's name, you know, is going to be the tap data type. My data type's name is going to be the tap data type. You can call it tap, like byte, short, int, long, there is tap data type. No, no, go on to, go on, don't go type tap, you'll get error. But I hope you're able to understand. Now, let us assume that I decided that the tap data type if in case somebody creates a variable of type tap, it is going to allocate four bits or half a byte, four bits. I hope you're able to think. Now, how will I decide what is the range of values which can be stored in that four bits? Well, that totally is determined by the different combinations of zeros and ones you can store in that four bits. Now, what do I mean? For example, one combination can be 0000, zero, 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 zero right? Next can be 0001, 0010, 0011, 0100. Like that if you go till you reach 1111, that is the last combination, you will notice you will have a total of 16 combinations. Now each combination can be assigned to a particular value. You can tell the computer, hey, if anyone stores four zeros in my four bits, then the decimal value that you must understand which decimal value it is, is zero. That you can assign a decimal value to it. Similarly, I'll tell one, two, three, four, five, add if I go till 15. Which means, what is the range of values I can store? Zero to 15. That is the range of values I can store. Now look at the right side. The highest value I can store is 15. Now 15, I want to write it in terms of the number of bits, which is nothing but 4, right? How will I write it? I can write it as 2 to the power 4. Now you may say 2 to the power 4 is 16, sir. Correct. What if I subtract 1 from it? Then it is 15. So 2 to the power 4 minus 1. Now I'm just bringing that formula previously for your reference. Do you see the right side is 2 to the power n minus 1 and see how we have got that? Interesting, isn't it? But the left side is minus 2 to the power n minus 1. But that doesn't apply to 0. You cannot bring the same relationship for the left side. 
Now you may be wondering why. That is because you have decided to store the 16 values and those 16 values are all positive. You have stored all positive values 0 to 15. But if you notice all the integer data types store negative as well as positive. Now the question is what if you wanted to store negative values? How are you going to do that? It's very simple. If you look at all our 16 combinations, you will notice that the first eight combinations have something in common. All their first bit is zero. If you look at the last eight combinations, you will notice all their first bit is one. Would you agree? Now what I'm doing is all the bits which begin with zero, I'm keeping it on this side and all the ones which start with one, I'm bringing it to this side. I hope you're able to think. Now what they decided is whenever you want to store negative numbers, there must be some distinction for the computer because for you it is negative, positive and all that. For a computer it's just binary zeros and ones. So how can the computer make this difference up? So they decided that negative numbers are going to be such numbers whose first bit is going to be one. Positive numbers are such numbers whose first bit is going to be zero. And the first bit of a binary number is called as the most significant bit or MSB. And I'm marking the MSB for both. As you can see it is zero, as you can see it is one. Now, right now, it is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. That is the values, right? And if you take any of the binary value and you convert it into decimal, you will get the same value. But I don't want 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I want it in such a way that I'll get minus 8, minus 7, minus 6, minus 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, then 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That I want. I hope you're able to think. And that's the right way to represent negative numbers. Now, how can I ensure that I get minus 8 out of 1, 0, 0, 0? Because 1, 0, 0 right now, if I convert it into I will get 8 and not minus 8. For that, they came up with a beautiful methodology called as 2's complement. Negative numbers are always stored in the form of 2's complement. Now, what does that mean? See, I'm just bringing that uh, 1, 0, 0, 0 here, this side. 2's complement means first you must take 1's complement of the number. Now, what is 1's complement? Very simple. If, you, if a bit is 1, make it 0. If it is 0, make it 1. Which means if I flip the bits, I will get 0, 1, 1, 1. And I'm putting it within bracket and putting a 1's to show you that it's 1's complement. But you need to find 2's complement, which means you need to add a 1 to it. If you need to add 1 to it, how this binary arithmetic works is, if you have 2 bits are 1, then it is 0, you need to carry forward 1. Again, you have two bits, which is one, which means it is zero, carry forward one. Again, two bits are one, which means it's zero, carry forward one. One and zero means it is one, which means you'll get one, zero, zero. Now, one, zero, 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 I'm just showing you the two's power below that. As you can see, the only bit where you have one is two to the power three, which means two to the power three is what? Eight. Sir, it's positive. Attach a negative sign. You got minus eight. Attach a negative sign. Oh, but even positive is 1, 0, 0, 0. Negative is also 1, 0, 0, 0. Can you prove it? It will work for others. Great. Let me take 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 here. I hope you're able to think. Now, this one I want to show you that using 2's complement, it can become minus 7. But otherwise, if you directly convert, it will be 9, positive 9. I hope you're able to think. How it works is take 1's complement, flip the bits. If you flip the bits, this is how it look. Take 2's complement and if you do the arithmetic, you will get 0, 1, 1, 1. I hope you are able to think this is the 2's complement. Now convert that into decimal. So see, I'm just putting the power of 2. If I put the power of 2, you know the, la the, the 1, 1, 1, all of them have uh, are 1. So you have to take 2 to the power. So it is 2 to the power 2 plus 2 to the power 1 plus 2 to the power 0, which is nothing but 4 plus 2 plus 1, which is nothing but 7. Attach a negative sign, minus 7. You apply this logic any of it, you will see it will perfectly work. So take the representation, okay, so take all those uh, binary combinations which begin with 1, they are for negative numbers. Now to get the negative integer from it, you must use 2's complement and this is what they have told. So perfectly it works, which means, which means now, now, if you look at the range of values we have, it is from minus 8, that is the least value, to the maximum value is what? 7. 
Now let's see whether it will fit into this range formula that we have, right? Definitely it will. It is nothing but minus 2 to the power, here n is 4 because 4 bits, 4 minus 1, which is nothing but minus 2 to the power 3, which is 8. 2 plus 2 to the power 4 minus 1 minus 1. That is nothing but 8 minus 1, 7. So it works. Do you see how these people have come up with this binary arithmetic? Do you see there is a reason behind why positive numbers are represented in a certain way, negative numbers are represented in a certain way. There is a reason behind everything. So I hope next time if somebody asks you how positive numbers are stored, how negative numbers are stored and why negative numbers are stored in 2's complement and why we have the range formula the way we have it, all of you will be able to answer in a really, really amazing way. Now it's time for us to understand a very, very simple yet extremely powerful concept with respect to bit manipulations called as bitwise operators. Did you know that between two bits, let us assume 0 and 1, you can apply operators in between them? These operators that you apply between two bits is only called as bitwise operators. Now what are these bitwise operators? This is the list of bitwise operators, right? Each one of them has a unique value that they will add to your life and naturally you must be understanding them, okay? So let's begin with the most fundamental bitwise operator called as the OR bitwise operator, right? And this is how the symbol of it looks like. Now to understand bitwise operators, you have to always make use of something called as a truth table, guys. You must make use of something called as a truth table. Now let us assume this is the truth table, right? This is the OR operator's truth table. So I'm just writing that here for you. This is the OR operator and the symbol for OR is always one pipe that looks like this. Now see, these are bits. These are different bits. I hope you're able to think. Now 0 and 0, let us assume one bit is 0, second bit is 0, you apply OR in between. Now what will be the result if you ask me? It is going to be 0. 0 and 1, if you apply OR in between, it is going to be 1. If in case you were to apply, let us assume uh, 1 and 0, between them you are going to apply OR, it is again going to be 1. If in case 1 and 1 you have, it is going to be 1. So through this you noticed that OR operator will be 0 only if both the bits are zeros. For all other combinations it is 1, which means if any of the bits is 1, answer is 1. If both the bits are 1, naturally answer is 1. Only if both of them are 0, it is 0. I hope you are able to think. Now, let's assume uh, I have uh, two variables with me. One byte type variable A whose value is 5 and a byte type variable B whose value is 9. Let us assume. Now those of you who are, use Python, you are not going to tell byte explicitly because it will automatically dynamically be decided by the interpreter but still the same concept and logic works in Python as it works in Java as well, right? Now listen to me and listen to me carefully. Now how does this work is the bigger question, isn't it? Now as you guys can see, I have already converted A which is 5 to its binary form, I have converted B which is 9 to its binary form. We are going to apply the OR operator between this and it's a bitwise operator. So for every corresponding bit, OR has to be applied. And if in case you see it, 1 OR 1, you must start from the rightmost bit, go to the leftmost bit. 1 OR 1 is nothing but 1. And you know, it's a very simple logic. Whenever even a single bit is 1, the result is 1. Only if both are 0, it is 0. So going by that logic, this is 1 this is 0, this is 1, this is 1, rest everything is zeros. I am putting the powers of 2 and wherever there are 1s, I am adding them up. What I am going to get is 13. I hope you are able to think. Which means, I am converting it into decimal. Which means the result of 5 or 9 is 13. And why that happened, I hope all of you understood. Similarly, let us look at the next operator which is nothing but the AND operator and I have the truth table here with me, right? If you look at the truth table, the result part has been left empty. Now AND means only if both the bits are 1, the result will be 1. Everything else will be 0, which means 0 and 0 clearly is 0. 
0 and 1 is 0, 1 and 0 is 0, 1 and 1 is 1 because only if 1 and 1 both are 1 then it is 1, rest is 0. Now if I apply AND operation between A and B or 5 and 9, you can see 1 and 1 is 1, then this is 0, 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 this is 0. I am applying the powers of 2, only the last bit is 1, so 2 to the power 0 is 1, I hope you are able to think, which means 5 AND 9 is 1, I hope you are able to think. It's very simple, you just have to remember this truth table, then you will be able to apply it. Coming to the next operator, it is the XOR operator. This is the symbol that you will be using. I have the truth table with me. Now you must understand, if both bits are the same, it will be 0. If both bits are different, it will be 1. Simple way to remember, if both bits are 0, it will be 0. If both bits are same, it will be 0, which means this is 0, both bits are same, this is 0. Both bits are different, both bits are different, which means it will be 1. Simple way to remember XOR. Same bits, 0. Different bits, 1. Any confusion till here? Now going by this, same bits, 0. Same bits, 0. Different bits, 1. Different bits, 1. Same bits, 0, 0, 0, 0. I am applying the powers of 2. So as you can see, this is 2 to the power 0, this is 2 to the power 1, this is 2 to the power 2 which is 4, this is 2 to the power 3 which is 8. So 8 plus 4 is nothing but 12. Any confusion till here? Which means 5 XOR 9 is 12. And this is the reason why, because this is how the bits change when you apply this operator. Now we have looked at these three operators. Shall we go test it in code? Let's go ahead. Watch it. I'll just tell system.out.println directly and instead of telling uh, A and B, directly I'll give the values, right, which is I will tell 5 and I'll put OR in between it, right, and 9, right, or you can say A equal to 5, B equal to 9, you can store it. I'll duplicate this line. I'll make that as AND. I'll duplicate this line. I'll make that as XOR, right. So let's see whether we get the expected result. If in case I execute it, you can notice 13, 1, 12. As per our expectation, it worked. So I hope these basic operators and how they work is clear to you. But it's a different story where you will be using them. I know that question is there at the back of your mind. Where will we be using them? What will we be using them for? 100% clarity I will give you. Don't worry about it. But there are few more bitwise operators which I would like to first explore. Now let's understand the left shift operator, right? As you can see, it is two angular, uh, you know, braces, you can call them, which is pointing towards the left side, or you can say less than symbol, right? So two less than symbols together is the uh, left shift operator. Now, how does this work? It's very simple. See, every, you can left shift how many ever times you want. So as you can see, I'm telling A, left shift it how many times? Once. Once means every bit will be shifted to its left by one position. See, I'm showing you arrow marks. So if I just trace the arrow marks, then 1 will come here, right? And then it is 0, and then it is 1, and then rest all are zeros. Which means, unfortunately, that last 0 doesn't have anywhere to go. If it gets shifted, it will go outside. See, it's going. It went. I hope you're able to think. So what about this empty position? This empty position, if you left shift, will always be filled with a zero. I hope you're able to think. Which means when you left shifted once, A became like this. It is the same, same thing. A now became like this. Now if I were to convert into decimal, I'm putting all the powers of two. If I put the powers of two, you can see it is uh, two to the power one, there is a one. Uh, 2 there is nothing, 3 there is a 1, so 2 to the power 3 is 8, 8 plus 2 is 10, so the decimal equivalent is 10, would you agree with me? Which means one more way of looking at it is, I now multiplied A with 2 and that is the result of left shifting once, I multiplied A with 2 once, so left shifting once is equivalent to multiplying by 2 once, I hope you are able to think. Now according to this logic, what if, what if, let me just remove all these operations, 
what if I made it like this guys wherein I just now change it to left shift but two times I want to left shift it two times right let me just enlarge it a little bit for your better understanding now left shift two times means again I'm putting arrows so look one one is now shifted by two positions which means this one should come here and that's what the arrow is also saying the zero shifted by two positions that's what the arrow is saying which means if I trace the arrows I will get like this one zero one followed by zeros which means these two zeros are lost see the arrow is showing outside which means they will be lost they will go so two empty spaces what will come here is zeros how are you able to think I'm putting the powers of 2 wherever there is 1 if I add them together what are you getting 20 what are you getting 20 don't you think it's equivalent to saying a's value was 5 left shifting by 2 times means multiplying by 2 2 times so into 2 into 2 or you could say into 2 to the power number of times I'm left shifting which is 2 2 square is 4 find 4 is 20 how are you able to think so every time you left shift it is equivalent to multiplying it by 2 the number of times you are left shifting I hope it is clear to you so clearly one thing you can understand is places where multiplication has to be done right or if you have to double the value you could be making use of this but the actual use of it where we will be using it we will explore it in greater detail a while later so I hope left shift operation is clear to you now similarly if I were to left shift by 3 it is equivalent to multiplying by 2 to the power 3 times which is nothing but 8 so you should technically be getting 40 you let us just go and uh, type some code and explore but before that if there is left shift 100% there should be right shift also how does right shift work let's explore